When it comes to the scale of celestial objects, planets in our own solar system provide a sense of familiarity. Jupiter, our neighborhood's heavyweight champion, feels large. But venture beyond our solar system and you'll find planets that make Jupiter look modest. Enter the world of Super Jupiters. These are exoplanets, planets located outside our solar system that boast masses exceeding that of Jupiter. Some of them, like HD 100546b, hold up to 13 times Jupiter's mass. The sheer size and volume of these planets are difficult to comprehend. With vast atmospheres primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, their swirling cloud bands and tumultuous weather systems might span wider than entire continents here on Earth. Yet size isn't the only fascinating aspect of these colossal worlds. A subset of these super Jupiters, known as rogue planets, defies conventional understanding of how planets should behave. They do not orbit any star. Instead, these rogue planets wander the vastness of space alone, without a sun to illuminate their skies. Imagine a planet, massive beyond comprehension, drifting in the inky blackness of space devoid of sunlight. Their existence challenges our traditional notions of planet formation and asks more questions about the diverse ways celestial bodies can come into existence. Moreover, the gravity on these super Jupiters would be intense, many times stronger than what we experience on Earth. This immense gravitational pull can lead to intriguing and bizarre phenomena. For instance, these planets might have layers of metallic hydrogen deep within their interiors, Hydrogen compressed under such extreme pressures that it behaves like a metal. In the hunt for extraterrestrial life, these supermassive planets also present new possibilities. While their gas-dominated nature might make them inhospitable for life as we know it, their potential moons, subjected to the planet's strong gravitational forces, could harbor subsurface oceans kept warm by tidal forces. Such environments could potentially be cradles for life, presenting a scenario where the most massive planets, even in their hostility, could indirectly nurture pockets of life. All in all, Super Jupiters embody the wonder and diversity of our universe, challenging our understanding and stretching the limits of what we once thought possible in planetary formation and behavior. In the vast cosmic theater, stars take center stage, illuminating the universe with their brilliance. But among these luminous bodies, a particular group stands out, not just for their light, but their sheer size, the supermassive stars. While our sun is often considered a standard reference for stellar sizes, it pales in comparison to the behemoths known as supermassive or hypergiant stars. These are not just larger, they are incomprehensibly vast. Stars like UY Scuti, one of the largest known, extend for more than 1,700 times the Sun's radius. If placed in the center of our solar system, it would engulf the orbits of planets up to and beyond Jupiter. The lives of these hypergiants are turbulent and short-lived, at least in astronomical terms. Born from massive clouds of gas and dust, these stars burn bright but burn out quickly. Their enormous sizes mean they have an abundance of fuel, but they consume it voraciously. Within a few million years, a mere blink in cosmic time, these stars exhaust their fuel and meet dramatic ends. And it's not just their size that's impressive. The internal processes of these stars are equally fascinating. Due to their vast masses, the pressures and temperatures in their cores reach levels unimaginable in smaller stars. These extreme conditions facilitate the fusion of heavier elements turning hydrogen into helium and progressing through the periodic table, creating elements like oxygen, carbon, and even metals like iron. Yet this grandeur comes at a price. The more massive the star, the more unstable its life. Many supermassive stars undergo periods of intense pulsations, causing them to eject vast amounts of material into space. This constant tumult makes their surfaces boil and roil with massive convective cells each one many times larger than our entire sun. Their demise is as spectacular as their lives. Once the fuel in their cores is expended, they can't support their immense gravitational pull, leading to a spectacular supernova explosion. These explosions scatter the heavier elements formed within the star out into space, seeding the universe with the building blocks for new stars, planets, and even life. In the end, the legacy of supermassive stars is twofold. They illuminate the cosmos with their unparalleled brilliance, and in their death throes they give back, ensuring the cycle of stellar birth and rebirth continues, 
In their enormity and intensity, they embody the dynamic, ever-evolving nature of the universe. Imagine a region in space where gravity pulls so much that even light can't escape its grasp. That's the essence of a black hole. But beyond the standard black holes, there are entities so massive and awe-inspiring that they defy comprehension. The supermassive black holes. These cosmic giants are often found at the centers of galaxies including our own Milky Way. Unlike stellar black holes, which form from the remnants of massive stars, supermassive black holes contain millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. Their origins are still a subject of debate among astronomers. Some theorize they form from the accretion of masses over eons, while others suggest they might originate from the collapse of immense gas clouds early in the universe's history. The gravitational influence of supermassive black holes is so powerful that they can dictate the dynamics of their host galaxies. Around them swirl accretion disks, vast rings of gas, dust and other cosmic debris pulled in by the black hole's immense gravitational force. As this material spirals closer to the event horizon, the point of no return, it heats up and emits intense radiation, often observable as quasars, some of the brightest objects in the universe. This intense gravitational pull also influences the paths of stars orbiting near them. Observations of stars at the center of our Milky Way have provided indirect evidence of the presence of a supermassive black hole named Sagittarius A asterisk. These stars whip around at such high velocities that only the presence of a massive, dense object like a supermassive black hole could cause such behavior. Yet for all their might and influence, supermassive black holes remain enigmatic. Their event horizons are shrouded in mystery beyond which our current understanding of physics breaks down. Within this boundary, all known laws of nature become unpredictable. It's a realm where our current understanding of space and time no longer applies, a true frontier of human knowledge. One of the most groundbreaking discoveries related to these entities was the capturing of the first ever image of a black hole silhouette by the Event Horizon Telescope in 2019. This image, a glowing ring surrounding a dark central region, was a visualization of the supermassive black hole at the heart of the galaxy M87, located 55 million light-years from Earth. The study of supermassive black holes is more than just a quest to understand these mysterious entities. It's a journey to the very edges of our understanding, a probe into the extremes of the universe, and a testament to the insatiable human curiosity about the cosmos. Deep within the vast expanse of the universe lie remnants and echoes of its very beginnings. These ancient signals offer tantalizing glimpses into the earliest moments after the Big Bang, allowing us to piece together the cosmic puzzle of our universe's infancy. When we talk about the universe's ancient echoes, the cosmic microwave background CMB, radiation stands out prominently. Detected for the first time in 1965, the CMB is a faint glow that fills every corner of the cosmos. Imagine it as the afterglow of the universe's explosive birth, a snapshot of what the universe looked like when it was only 380,000 years old. At this time, the universe was a hot soup of particles, and as it expanded, it cooled down, allowing protons and electrons to combine and form neutral hydrogen atoms. The photons that had been scattered by these free particles could now travel freely through the universe. These very photons are what we detect as the CMB today. The CMB provides a treasure trove of information. Tiny fluctuations or ripples in this radiation, which represent minute differences in temperatures, offer insights into the initial conditions of the universe and the seeds for the formation of galaxies and large-scale structures. These temperature variations are like footprints indicating regions of varying densities in the early universe. Delving deeper into the ancient cosmos, we find relics like Population the Three Stars. While no direct observation of these first-generation stars has been made, they are believed to have formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Composed almost entirely of hydrogen and helium, these behemoths were much larger and hotter than stars today, living fast and dying young in spectacular supernovae explosions. The debris from these explosions went on to seed subsequent generations of stars with heavier elements, setting the stage for the complex cosmic dance that led to galaxies, planets and eventually life. In our quest to understand the universe's origins, we also study the distribution of galaxies, clusters and cosmic voids. 
By mapping these vast structures, scientists can trace back the gravitational forces at play in the early universe, shedding light on the mysterious dark matter that binds these cosmic entities together. As our instruments become more advanced and our observations more precise, we edge ever closer to unraveling the secrets of the universe's early days. Each discovery, from the faintest radiation to the most distant celestial object, adds another piece to the intricate tapestry of our cosmic history, reinforcing our connection to the ancient universe and our place within its vastness. In the realm of cosmic phenomena, gravitational waves have emerged as an intriguing subject of study. These ripples in space-time, akin to the ripples created when a stone is thrown into a pond, have revolutionized our understanding of some of the universe's most violent and enigmatic events. Albert Einstein first predicted the existence of gravitational waves in 1915 as a part of his groundbreaking theory of general relativity. Simply put, when massive celestial objects like black holes or neutron stars accelerate or collide, they create waves that propagate at the speed of light through the very fabric of space-time itself. However, due to their incredibly faint nature, it took a century after Einstein's prediction for us to detect them directly. In 2015, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO, made a monumental breakthrough. They observed gravitational waves emanating from the collision of two black holes, approximately 1.3 billion light-years away. This detection was not just a testament to human engineering and perseverance, but also opened a completely new window to observe the universe. Instead of just using light, as with telescopes, we now had the capability to listen to the universe's vibrations. With gravitational wave detection, we've gained a powerful tool to study events that were previously hidden from our view. For instance, the merging of neutron stars, which was detected in 2017, not only produced gravitational waves, but also emitted light, radio, and gamma rays. By analyzing both gravitational waves and electromagnetic radiation, Scientists gathered invaluable information about these stellar smash-ups, the kind of metals produced in the collision, and more insights into the universe's expansion rate. Further, gravitational waves hold the potential to let us peer even deeper into the universe's history. There's a hope, albeit a challenging one, to detect waves from supermassive black hole mergers or even echoes from the Big Bang itself. As technology advances and new observatories join the hunt, the dawn of multi-messenger astronomy, where we combine different signals from space, will undoubtedly lead to more groundbreaking revelations about the cosmos. In our cosmic neighborhood, the term exoplanet has always stirred excitement and intrigue. These are planets beyond our solar system, orbiting stars other than our sun. But while many of us have become accustomed to hearing about Earth-like planets or gas giants similar to Jupiter, the universe, in its ever-expanding mystery, has revealed a new type of exoplanet, the Haitian planet. The name Haitian might sound futuristic, but it's derived from the characteristics these planets exhibit. They're worlds larger than Earth, but noticeably smaller than Neptune, kind of like a middle ground in terms of size. What truly makes them stand out, however, is their environment. Enveloping these planets are vast global oceans, not mere pockets of water, but entire worlds covered in it. But as you might guess, these aren't serene beachfront properties. The oceans of Hycian planets are beneath atmospheres heavily dominated by hydrogen. While hydrogen-rich atmospheres aren't unique in the grand scale of the universe, the combination of this thick, hydrogen-rich blanket with a water-laden world below is what makes the Hycian category so fascinating. Essentially, the presence of such a substantial hydrogen atmosphere indicates a very different evolutionary history for these planets compared to Earth or even Neptune-like worlds. The discovery of this new class of exoplanets isn't just an academic exercise. It represents a paradigm shift in how we view our universe and understand the possibilities within it. Traditionally, the search for life and habitable conditions beyond Earth was fixated on planets that shared Earth's characteristics. But the emergence of the Haitian category has broadened that scope, allowing scientists to look at potential life-bearing worlds through a new lens and redefining what we consider as habitable. When it comes to understanding habitability, it's human nature to lean into what's familiar. Traditionally, the search for extraterrestrial life or environments suitable for life has revolved around planets that resemble Earth. 
The Goldilocks zone, where conditions are neither too hot nor too cold for liquid water to exist, has been our guiding light. But the universe, with its vast and diverse wonders, doesn't always conform to our Earth-centric models. Enter the Haitian planets. These unique celestial bodies challenge the conventional norms of habitability. Yes, they possess vast oceans, a tantalizing hint at the possibility of life. Yet the environment on these planets is radically different from what we'd consider comfortable. With their thick, hydrogen-rich atmospheres, conditions on Haitian planets would be extreme by our standards. Immense pressure from the dense atmosphere, combined with possibly scorching temperatures, creates an environment that at first glance might seem inhospitable. However, it's precisely these extreme conditions that could harbor life forms very different from those we know. Scientists speculate that these worlds could have hot spots, regions within their oceans where temperatures and pressures reach a balance, potentially suitable for some form of life. Picture this, microbial life forms, or even more complex organisms adapted to their high-pressure, hydrogen-rich environment, thriving deep within the vast oceans of a Hycean planet. Interestingly, the abundant hydrogen atmosphere could also play a pivotal role in supporting life. Hydrogen can trap heat, creating a greenhouse effect. This in turn could warm up the oceans below, regardless of the planet's distance from its parent star. As a result, even planets located outside the traditional habitable zone might still provide warm aquatic environments, thanks to this hydrogen-induced warming. It's a revelation that forces us to think outside our terrestrial box. For in the vastness of space, life might not always dance to the familiar rhythms of Earth, but could be swaying to the unique cosmic beats of worlds like Haitian planets. At the core of the astronomical community's fascination with Haitian planets is their distinctive set of characteristics, setting them apart from previously categorized exoplanets. Let's delve deep into what really makes these celestial bodies stand out. First and foremost, the name Haitian is derived from two predominant features, hydrogen and oceanic. The combination of these two elements encapsulates the essence of these planets. While many planets possess oceans or hydrogen-rich atmospheres, it's the interplay between the two that defines Hycean worlds. These planets are primarily water worlds. Unlike Earth, where continents punctuate vast oceans, the surface of a Hycean planet is believed to be almost entirely submerged in water. This results in a deep global ocean, far more expansive than anything we have on our home planet. Imagine a boundless expanse of water, where the horizon melds seamlessly with the sky, uninterrupted by landforms. But it's not just the endless oceans that make Haitian planets unique, it's also their thick atmospheres predominantly composed of hydrogen. This dense, hydrogen-rich atmosphere contrasts with the nitrogen and oxygen-rich one we breathe on Earth. A hydrogen-dominated environment brings its own set of dynamic interactions, particularly when combined with the presence of vast oceans. Moreover, the atmospheric conditions on Haitian planets contribute to another of their hallmark features, the greenhouse effect. The thick hydrogen atmosphere acts as an insulating blanket, trapping heat and warming the planet's surface. This could potentially maintain the temperature of the oceans at a level conducive to life, even if the planet orbits its star at a distance traditionally considered too cold for life as we know it. Another intriguing feature is the possible existence of a twilight zone, a layer within the deep ocean, where the pressure, temperature and chemical conditions might be just right for life. While sunlight may not penetrate this deep, life could still thrive, powered by chemical energy from the planet's geothermal activity or other processes. All these characteristics paint a vivid picture of a world that is both alien and familiar. The mysteries of Hycean planets beckon scientists and astronomers, reminding us that the universe is filled with wonders waiting to be discovered. In our ongoing quest to identify extraterrestrial life, Hycean planets have emerged as compelling candidates. With their unique characteristics, these celestial bodies have offered fresh avenues for exploration and rejuvenated the hopes of many in the scientific community. To begin with, the very environment of Hycean planets suggests a strong potential for life. These planets, with their vast oceans and hydrogen-rich atmospheres, present conditions that might be suitable for life forms distinct from those we're familiar with on Earth. The deep, expansive oceans hint at the possibility of a diverse marine ecosystem teeming with unknown organisms. Just as our oceans harbor everything from microscopic plankton to gargantuan whales, 
Who's to say what marvels might exist in the depths of a Hycean world? The prospect becomes even more tantalizing when we consider the Twilight Zone, a region deep within the Hycean Oceans. While initially it may seem counterintuitive to expect life in such an environment, devoid of sunlight, we must remember that life on Earth thrives in the most unexpected places. From hydrothermal vents in the deep ocean to acidic lakes, life has an uncanny ability to adapt and flourish. In the twilight zones of Hycean planets, organisms might rely on chemical energy derived from the planet's geothermal activity or other intriguing processes rather than photosynthesis. Further bolstering the case for life on these planets is their greenhouse effect. The temperatures maintained by this effect could create environments suitable for biochemistry to take place, potentially allowing for the emergence and sustenance of life. Advances in technology have given researchers the tools to study these distant planets in greater detail. While currently, we can't definitively confirm the existence of life on Hycean planets, the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope and other advanced observatories might soon provide clearer insights. They'll allow scientists to analyze the atmospheres of these exoplanets, searching for biomarkers, chemical signs of life. In a universe of infinite possibilities, the discovery of Hycean planets has opened a new chapter in the story of our search for life beyond Earth. As we continue to unravel their mysteries, we might not only learn about these distant worlds, but also gain deeper insights into the very nature of life itself. The quest to find Hycean planets has been fueled by curiosity and driven by technological advancements. While these planets as a category are relatively new to our exoplanet lexicon, some have already stood out, drawing considerable attention from astronomers and astrophysicists alike. One of the most discussed is K218b, located around 124 light-years from Earth. Orbiting a red dwarf star, this planet was initially identified by the Kepler Space Telescope. Later observations revealed the presence of water vapor in its atmosphere, making it one of the first exoplanets where water was confirmed. Given the nature of its atmosphere and its location within the habitable zone of its host star, where conditions might be just right for liquid water, K218b quickly became an intriguing candidate in the hunt for Hycean worlds. Another notable mention is GJ1214b, a planet orbiting the star Gliese 1214. Situated a mere 40 light years away from us, this world is intriguing due to its thick atmosphere, which might contain large quantities of water. This could suggest vast oceanic depths, possibly with extreme conditions differing significantly from Earth's oceans. Beyond these, the 2I700d planet has captured the imaginations of many. Discovered by NASA's TESS, also known as the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, it's the first Earth-sized planet in the habitable zone of a dwarf star. The potential for a Hycian environment on Tai 700 d is promising, especially given its size and location relative to its star. Lastly, the Kepler 22b planet, located about 600 light-years from Earth, deserves mention. While it's larger than Earth, it orbits within the habitable zone of its star, Kepler 22. The conditions on this planet, particularly the possibility of it having a vast and deep ocean, make it an exciting candidate for the high sea and category. It's essential to note that while these planets are promising, a lot remains unknown. The depth and extent of their oceans, the exact composition of their atmospheres and other crucial details, are still subjects of study and speculation. With every new discovery, however, we inch closer to understanding these enigmatic worlds and their potential for hosting life. Where is here? Imagine if here was not Earth, but Europa, Jupiter's icy moon. But why Europa? And what challenges and wonders would humans face if they set up camp on this distant world? The allure of Europa Europa, the sixth closest moon of Jupiter, has always intrigued scientists not just because of its ice-covered surface, but because beneath that icy shell, a vast ocean is believed to exist. This ocean might contain more than twice the water volume of all of Earth's oceans combined. But what's even more fascinating is the possibility that this ocean might just harbor life, and where there's water, human imagination and ambition flow. Europa is not just a cold place, it's exceptionally frigid, with average surface temperatures plunging to about minus 160 degrees Celsius, it's far colder than the chilliest places on Earth. Imagine the coldest day you've ever experienced and then magnify that sensation many times over. 
Such temperatures would make any direct human activity on the surface nearly impossible. The tools would freeze, machinery would malfunction, and human life would be at severe risk. But the cold isn't the only challenge. The surface of Europa is encased in an ice shell, which could be between 15 to 25 kilometers thick. Breaking through this formidable icy barrier to access the underlying ocean, or even just to set up a base, would require advanced drilling techniques and equipment resilient enough to withstand the cold. Then there's the issue of radiation. Jupiter possesses a powerful magnetic field, which bathes Europa in high levels of radiation. This radiation is much more intense than what we're used to on Earth and poses a serious health risk to any potential human settlers. Long-term exposure can lead to severe health complications, including an increased risk of cancer. Therefore, any habitats on Europa would need to be shielded effectively from this radiation. The thick ice layer, though a challenge for access, could be a potential shield against this radiation, making subterranean habitats more feasible. Europa's atmosphere is also significantly different from Earth's. Primarily composed of oxygen, it's extremely tenuous. This means that it's far too thin to support human life as we know it. Settlers on Europa wouldn't be able to step outside without a spacesuit, and habitats would need to be completely sealed and possess their own life support systems to provide breathable air. Europa's gravitational force is only about 13% of Earth's. While it may sound fun to bounce around in low gravity, the long-term effects on the human body are not fully understood. Prolonged exposure to low gravity conditions, as observed in astronauts, can lead to muscle atrophy, bone density loss and other health concerns. Thus, innovative solutions would be necessary to help humans maintain physical health. Finally, for all of Europa's abundant ice and potential water, many other essential resources would be scarce. Vital elements and minerals needed to sustain human life and technology might be missing or hard to extract. Reliable food sources would also be a significant challenge. Settlers would likely need to rely on shipments from Earth or develop advanced hydroponic and aeroponic systems to grow food underground. Imagine an endless expanse of water, stretching as far as the eye can see, hidden beneath layers of ice. This isn't a scene from a science fiction novel, but a reality on Europa. This moon of Jupiter has a subsurface ocean, believed to contain more than double the volume of all of Earth's water combined. And where there's water, there's potential energy. Europa is in a gravitational dance with Jupiter, a massive planet with an exceptionally strong pull. As the moon orbits, Jupiter's gravitational tug warps and stretches it, generating heat through tidal forces. This heat ensures that Europa's underground ocean remains liquid and doesn't freeze solid, but it also presents an opportunity. These same tidal forces could potentially be harnessed, transformed into thermal energy, and then further converted into electricity. It would be a continuous source of power much like how we harness tidal energy on Earth, but on a much grander scale. Beyond tidal forces, there is evidence to suggest that Europa may possess underwater volcanic activity. On Earth, underwater volcanoes or hydrothermal vents spew forth immense energy. If such vents exist on Europa, they could potentially serve as an additional energy source, providing heat and possibly driving turbines to generate electricity. Moreover, these hydrothermal vents could create nutrient-rich pockets in the ocean, sparking intriguing conversations about potential life and offering resource opportunities for human settlers. Europa's icy surface is constantly bombarded by solar radiation, a process that splits water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. With the right technology, humans could potentially capture and store these gases. On Earth, hydrogen is already being looked at as a promising clean energy source, and with oxygen present, the necessary ingredients for combustion are readily available. In essence, Europa itself could provide a renewable fuel source, given the right infrastructure. Water, besides being an essential component for life, can be split into hydrogen and oxygen through the process of electrolysis. While this method would require an initial energy input, once an energy infrastructure based on tidal or volcanic sources is established, the vast ocean of Europa could serve as a vast reservoir for producing fuel, power, and breathable air. Harnessing energy on Europa offers exciting possibilities, not just for sustaining a potential human colony, but also for understanding and tapping into natural processes that are different, yet eerily familiar to those on Earth. When we talk about oceans on Earth, we imagine vast expanses of salt water teeming with life. 
stretching from one horizon to the other. Now visualize an ocean entirely concealed beneath an icy shield in perpetual darkness, untouched and unexplored. This is the enigmatic ocean of Europa. Europa's outer shell is a protective layer of ice that varies in thickness but can be several kilometers deep. Beneath this icy armor, the vast ocean, possibly containing more than twice the water volume of all of Earth's oceans combined, remains hidden. The challenge would be penetrating this layer, a task that requires innovative technologies and methods to ensure safe passage through the ice and into the waters below. One of the most exciting prospects about Europa's hidden ocean is the possibility of life. On Earth, life has been discovered in the most inhospitable places, from the deep oceanic trenches to acidic lakes. The question arises, could Europa's deep, dark ocean, potentially warmed by thermal vents and rich in minerals, support alien life forms? Discovering even the simplest microorganisms in these waters would revolutionize our understanding of life's tenacity and the potential for existence beyond Earth. It's speculated that over time, the movement of Europa's icy crust may have created a complex network of tunnels, caverns and pockets filled with liquid water. These could serve as oases for life or sheltered habitats. For human explorers, these subglacial pockets could offer access points to the deeper ocean, as well as potential safe havens or bases from which to conduct scientific research. If we were to find signs of life, no matter how primitive, beneath Europa's icy crust, it would raise significant ethical questions. Would we have the right to colonize and utilize resources from a moon that already harbors life? How would such a discovery reshape our cultural, philosophical and religious narratives about our place in the universe? Europa's mysterious hidden depths beckon us with both challenges and promises. As we gaze upon its cracked, icy surface from afar, it's almost as if the moon is inviting us to uncover its age-old secrets, waiting patiently for someone or something to listen to its story. The idea of humans setting foot on a distant moon around Jupiter would be, in itself, a monumental event in our shared history. Imagine then what would happen if life were discovered beneath the thick ice of Europa. It wouldn't just be a scientific breakthrough, it would be a cultural and psychological game-changer. Living on Europa would mean adjusting to an environment vastly different from Earth. The constant darkness, the isolation from other human settlements, and the potentially claustrophobic nature of life beneath the ice could have significant psychological impacts on colonists. Addressing mental well-being would be as crucial as ensuring physical health in this extreme environment. With advancements in technology, the initial bases on Europa could expand into bustling colonies, with entire ecosystems being built beneath the ice. Advanced drilling and construction techniques might enable habitats to be developed closer to the Moon's subsurface ocean, allowing for easier exploration and resource utilization. Europa's vast ocean might not just harbor life, it could also be a treasure trove of resources. The extraction of minerals, gases and possibly even new, previously unknown materials from the ocean and the ice could support the Moon's economy and even be exported back to Earth or other space colonies. The challenges of living on Europa would drive rapid advancements in technology. From advanced drilling machinery to submersible exploration vehicles and life support systems, the technological innovations from a Europa colony could benefit other space missions and applications on Earth. As the colony on Europa grows and establishes itself, it could play a pivotal role in the broader human expansion into the solar system. Being a midpoint between the inner and outer solar system, Europa could become a hub for trade, research and exploration, bridging the gap between planets and fostering interplanetary cooperation. The future on Europa holds infinite possibilities, painting a picture of humanity not just as residents of Earth, but as true citizens of the cosmos. Venus, often dubbed Earth's sister planet because of its similar size and proximity to us, has always been somewhat overshadowed by our red neighbor Mars in the quest for extraterrestrial life. However, a recent discovery has cast a surprisingly bright spotlight onto this scorching cloud-covered world. For the longest time, Venus was dismissed as a possible haven for life, with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead and an atmosphere thick with carbon dioxide and clouds of sulfuric acid, it seemed an unlikely place to find any signs of life. But the universe, as it often does, threw a curveball at us. In 2020, 
scientists made an announcement that caused quite a stir in the astronomical community. They had detected traces of a gas called phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Now why was this discovery so groundbreaking? Phosphine is a molecule made up of phosphorus and hydrogen. On Earth, this gas is primarily associated with life, produced by bacteria living in oxygen-free environments. The clouds of Venus, where the phosphine was detected, have temperatures and pressures that are somewhat Earth-like compared to the planet's inhospitable surface. This led to the tantalizing possibility. Could there be life floating in the Venusian atmosphere? Before jumping to conclusions, researchers meticulously looked for other explanations. Volcanic activity, lightning, and even meteor impacts were considered as potential sources of the phosphine. Yet, none of these scenarios could produce the amount of phosphine that was observed. The instruments and methods used to detect the phosphine underwent rigorous scrutiny, with teams double-checking data and ensuring the signal was genuine. The presence of phosphine doesn't confirm life on Venus, but it does open the door to this exciting possibility. To find more answers, missions to Venus are now being considered with renewed interest. By sending probes to study its atmosphere directly or even to float in the clouds, scientists hope to determine the origin of the phosphine and see if the thick, acidic clouds of our neighboring planet might indeed harbor some form of life. In the grand tapestry of space exploration, the phosphine discovery on Venus reminds us of an essential lesson. Sometimes the search for alien life may lead us in directions we never anticipated. Mars, our captivating neighbor, has always been at the center of mankind's fascination when pondering the existence of extraterrestrial life. With its haunting red landscapes and vast valleys, it's a planet that has inspired countless tales of Martians and space invasions. But recently, some real, tangible clues have emerged from this distant world that could hint at the existence of ancient life. The term organic might conjure up images of green foods or farming practices, but in the realm of chemistry, it simply refers to carbon-based molecules, which are life's building blocks. Such molecules are crucial because all known life forms on Earth are carbon-based. In 2018, the scientific community was abuzz with excitement when the Curiosity rover, NASA's mobile laboratory rolling across Mars, discovered organic molecules preserved in Martian rocks. These rocks, located in an area named Gale Crater, are estimated to be about 3.5 billion years old. This discovery means that at around the same time life was gaining a foothold on Earth, Mars had the ingredients necessary for life. What makes Gale Crater especially interesting is that it's believed to have once contained a lake. With the discovery of these organic molecules, one can't help but imagine a past Mars where water-filled lakes or oceans nurtured early forms of life. However, it's important to note that the presence of organic molecules doesn't directly point to life. Mars is a dynamic planet with a history of volcanic activity. These organic molecules could have been formed by non-biological processes or even delivered from outer space via meteorites. Despite the uncertainty, this discovery adds another layer to Mars's already complex and intriguing story. Scientists, with the help of rovers like Curiosity and Future Missions, continue to unravel the mysteries of the Red Planet. Each discovery, each hint of ancient water or molecule, draws us closer to answering that age-old question. Are we alone in the universe? For now, the presence of organic molecules on Mars stands as a testament to the planet's potential to have supported life. As we dive deeper into its secrets, who knows what other revelations await us? Far from the warmth of the sun in the chilling depths of our solar system, lie two icy moons that, contrary to their frigid exteriors, might harbor the warmth of life deep within. Enceladus, a glistening moon of Saturn, and Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons, are more than just frozen celestial bodies. They are worlds of intrigue and promise. At first glance, Enceladus might appear as just another ice-covered sphere, but it hides a dynamic secret beneath its surface. In 2005, the Cassini spacecraft, while exploring Saturn and its moons, witnessed stunning plumes of water vapor and ice particles erupting from the south pole of Enceladus. These geyser-like jets bursting forth into space indicated that beneath its icy shell, Enceladus might be hiding a vast subsurface ocean. Europa, with its cracked, ice-covered surface, tells a similar tale. 
Observations from various missions and telescopes have provided strong evidence that a massive subsurface ocean, potentially twice the volume of Earth's oceans, exists beneath Europa's icy crust. These observations, coupled with the Moon's induced magnetic field, suggest the presence of a salty, liquid water ocean. But why is the discovery of these oceans significant? Water, as we understand it, is a fundamental ingredient for life. On Earth, where there's water, there's often life. These hidden oceans on Enceladus and Europa offer the tantalizing possibility that, in their warm depths, microbial life or even more complex organisms could exist. It's incredible to imagine that in such extreme and distant environments, life might find a way. The potential existence of hydrothermal vents on the ocean floors of these moons further amplifies this possibility. On Earth, hydrothermal vents in our oceans' abyssal depths teem with life. These ecosystems thrive without sunlight, relying instead on the chemicals spewed out by the vents for energy. Could similar vents in the oceans of Enceladus or Europa be home to alien life forms? As technology advances, our gaze turns not just to the distant stars, but also to these icy worlds in our backyard. Future missions to these moons aim to study their oceans more closely, hunting for signs of life or the conditions that might support it. The discovery of these subsurface oceans has reshaped our understanding of where life might exist beyond Earth. It's a compelling reminder that sometimes the most exciting mysteries and potentials for discovery lie just beneath the surface. The TRAPPIST-1 system, discovered in 2017, was a breakthrough in our quest to understand the universe and the possibility of life beyond Earth. Situated just 40 light-years away from us, it's relatively close in astronomical terms. When you think of the vastness of space, 40 light-years might seem enormous. But in the grand scale of the universe, this system is practically our neighbor. What makes TRAPPIST-1 truly special is the sheer number of Earth-sized planets it contains. Seven to be exact, these planets are not just any regular planets. They are remarkably similar in size to our own home Earth. This resemblance in size leads scientists to believe that these planets could potentially have similar conditions to Earth, which opens up the possibilities of them hosting life. The most intriguing aspect of these seven siblings is that three of them are comfortably nestled in what's known as the star's habitable zone. This is a region around a star where the conditions might just be right to support liquid water on the planet's surface. As we know, water is essential for life, at least life as we understand it. If there's liquid water, there might be an environment conducive to life. Furthermore, the star at the center of the TRAPPIST-1 system is a red dwarf. These types of stars are cooler and less luminous than our sun. Because of this, the habitable zone where temperatures could allow for liquid water is closer to the star. This means that the planets in this zone, with their potential watery reservoirs, are in close proximity to their parent star, making them tantalizing targets for future observations. There's a significant effort in the scientific community to study these planets in detail. Using advanced telescopes and observational techniques, researchers hope to decipher the atmospheres of these planets. If they can determine the composition of these atmospheres, they could look for signs of life, or at least conditions favorable for life. The TRAPPIST-1 system, with its Earth-like planets and potential for water, remains a beacon of hope in the search for extraterrestrial life. Deep in the cosmos, in the vast expanse of our universe, there lies a phenomenon that has both baffled and excited astronomers for years. Fast radio bursts, commonly abbreviated as FRBs. First discovered in 2007, these are intense, millisecond-long spikes of radio energy that seem to come from very, very far away and their origins remain one of the most captivating puzzles in modern astronomy. Imagine for a moment a lighthouse. It sends out a quick powerful beam of light that sweeps across the landscape and then disappears, only to repeat again after a while. FRBs are somewhat similar in nature. They are these extremely short-lived yet incredibly powerful bursts of radio waves that, when first detected, left many experts scratching their heads. The distance from which these FRBs are coming from is astounding. Through various observations and calculations, scientists have determined that many of these signals are originating from galaxies millions to billions of light years away. To put that into perspective, even the light from our closest neighboring galaxy, Andromeda, takes about 2.5 million years to reach us. That these brief signals from far off galaxies manage to reach us is a testament to their immense energy and power. 
But what causes FRBs? That's where the plot thickens. There have been numerous theories. Some suggest that these could be the byproducts of massive cosmic events, like the collision of neutron stars or the eruption of supermassive black holes. Others even proposed more exotic theories, like signals sent by advanced alien civilizations trying to reach out to the cosmos. While the extraterrestrial hypothesis is undeniably thrilling, researchers tend to look for more conventional, natural explanations first. In recent times, some breakthroughs have been made. For instance, certain FRBs have been observed to repeat coming from the same location in the sky. This repeater behavior might provide clues about their origins. Are they from neutron stars in the throes of death? Or are they the result of some other high-energy astrophysical process? The hunt to uncover the mysteries of FRBs is ongoing, with newer telescopes and technologies paving the way for deeper insights. These enigmatic signals from the cosmos might not only teach us about the vast, intricate workings of the universe, but could also offer hints, no matter how subtle, about the possibility of life beyond our tiny blue planet. Space, the final frontier, or is it? The vast expanse of the cosmos filled with stars, planets and galaxies, all with their unique and mystifying characteristics. But how much do we really know about the cosmos that surrounds us? Let's take a trip through the universe and uncover some truly astounding space facts. In the grand scheme of things, it's easy to feel small when we look up at the night sky, and that's because space is mind-bogglingly vast. The Earth is approximately 7,917 miles in diameter, a number that's fairly easy to comprehend. But when we look at the Sun, the star at the heart of our solar system, it's almost 110 times the diameter of Earth. And now, let's stretch our perspective even further. The Milky Way galaxy, our cosmic home, is about 100,000 light years in diameter. That means it would take light, traveling at about 671 million miles per hour, around 100,000 years to cross from one side of our galaxy to the other. And that's just our galaxy. Estimates suggest there could be as many as two trillion galaxies in the observable universe. The scale of space is truly astronomical. If the universe is the stage, then light is one of its key performers. Light is essential to our understanding of the cosmos, and its speed, commonly referred to as c, is one of the most fundamental constants in physics. And it is fast, about 299,792 kilometers per second in a vacuum. To give you an idea, light could travel around the Earth more than seven times in just one second. Yet, even at this incredible speed, it takes light over eight minutes to reach us from the Sun, and about 5.5 hours to get to us from Pluto at its farthest point. But here's where things get really weird, light doesn't age. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, as you move closer to the speed of light, time slows down for you relative to slower moving observers. This effect is known as time dilation. To a photon, which moves at the speed of light, its birth at a distant star and its absorption here on Earth would appear to happen instantaneously. Light speed isn't just crucial for delivering us images of the universe, it's also the maximum speed at which information can travel. That's why we talk about light years as a measure of distance, because it tells us not only about how far away something is, but also how far back in time we're looking when we observe distant stars and galaxies. Pondering the speed of light really makes us question our intuition about time, space, and the nature of the universe itself. Now let's turn our attention to the stars, the fiery furnaces of the cosmos. Stars are impressive not only for their brightness, but also for their immense size and mass. One such celestial heavyweight is UY Scuti, known as one of the largest stars we've discovered so far. But what about the heaviest? That title goes to the star R-136-01, found in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a neighboring galaxy to the Milky Way. R-136-01 tips the cosmic scales at roughly 315 times the mass of our Sun. To put that into perspective, if our Sun were the size of a small marble, I-136-01 would be about the size of a basketball. Its immense mass also makes it incredibly bright. In fact, R-136-01 is so bright that if it replaced our Sun, it would outshine it as much as the Sun currently outshines the full Moon, making our daytime almost 100,000 times brighter. Yet even with such enormous mass, R-136-01 is not immune to the laws of stellar evolution. Like all stars, it will eventually exhaust its nuclear fuel. 
and when a massive star like R136A1 dies, it goes out with a bang in a supernova explosion. This could result in a neutron star or, if massive enough, a black hole leaving behind a lasting legacy in the cosmos. The term Goldilocks zone might sound like it's straight out of a fairy tale, but it's a scientific term that could have major implications for the search for extraterrestrial life. It refers to the habitable zone around a star where the conditions are just right, not too hot, not too cold. For liquid water to exist on the surface of a planet, this zone is crucial because as far as we know, liquid water is a fundamental ingredient for life as we understand it. But the Goldilocks zone isn't the same for every star, it depends on the star's size and temperature. For example, red dwarfs, which are smaller and cooler than our sun, have a closer Goldilocks zone while larger, hotter stars have a further one. Scientists are constantly hunting for exoplanets in this special zone, because finding one could increase the chances of discovering alien life. The Kepler Space Telescope has identified numerous such planets, making the cosmos feel a little less lonely. And yet, each discovery only underscores the mind-bending vastness of the universe, as well as the rare, delicate conditions necessary for life to exist. The term Goldilocks Zone may sound innocent, but it underscores a very real and exciting quest to uncover the mysteries of life in the universe. Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun, is well known for its beautiful ring system, but it also holds an interesting distinction. It's the only planet in our solar system that's less dense than water. Now, imagine you have a bathtub big enough to fit Saturn. Hypothetically, of course, Saturn would actually float. This gas giant has an average density of about 0.687 grams per cubic centimeter, while water's density is approximately 1 gram per cubic centimeter. But why is it so? Saturn is predominantly composed of hydrogen and helium, elements much lighter than the rocky material that makes up Earth. This lower density contributes to its size. Despite being over 95 times the mass of Earth, it's over 764 times the volume. Such a significant difference is a mind-boggling illustration of the range of celestial bodies our universe has to offer. If diamonds are your best friend, then wait until you meet BPM 37093, also known as the Diamond Star. Located around 50 light-years away in the constellation of Centaurus, BPM 37093 is a crystallized white dwarf, the remains of a star that has burned out and collapsed. Now, here's where things get shiny. The core of this star contains oxygen and carbon, and under the extreme pressure and temperature, the carbon has crystallized. Essentially, this means that the core of BPM 37093 is a gigantic diamond, around 4,000 kilometers in diameter. To give some perspective, that's approximately 10 billion trillion trillion carats, a size that makes the Hope Diamond look like a speck of dust. If you ever needed proof of how extreme and diverse the universe can be, look no further than this celestial jewel, lighting up the cosmos with its glittering core. Space is famously known for its silence. It's an emptiness, a void, an expanse of silence so profound that it's become the stuff of existential contemplation. In space, no one can hear you scream, is a popular phrase, and for good reason. Because space is a vacuum, sound, which needs a medium like air or water to travel, cannot be propagated. But that's not the end of the story. While it's true that we can't hear sound in space the same way we do on Earth, various spacecraft and instruments have recorded space sounds, octillas actually, oscillations in electric and magnetic fields, and translated them into a form that humans can hear. For example, NASA's Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, which have traveled beyond the solar system, recorded the eerie song of interstellar space which is a rich symphony of oscillations in the plasma field. Closer to home, the noises of our very own planet, dubbed Chorus, have been recorded by the Van Allen probes, sounds reminiscent of an alien bird song. So in a sense, the silent universe is playing its own cosmic symphony, one that we are just beginning to understand. When asked about the tallest mountain, most people would instinctively answer Mount Everest, towering over the world at a height of 29,031 feet, However, if we redefine our parameters from base to peak, not from sea level, the title holder shifts to the red planet, Mars. Olympus Mons, a giant shield volcano, stands at a staggering 69,841 feet from base to peak, over twice the height of Everest. 
Olympus Mons is so large that it covers an area roughly equivalent to the size of the state of Arizona in the United States. The immense size of Olympus Mons is a result of the Martian surface's lack of tectonic plate activity. On Earth, the motion of tectonic plates limits the lifespan of a single volcano, but on Mars, a stationary hotspot of magma can continue to pour out lava for billions of years, piling up to form giant shield volcanoes. So while we marvel at the heights of our earthly mountains, let's not forget that there are geological wonders scattered throughout the cosmos that make even our highest peaks seem small in comparison. When we gaze up into the night sky, we are seeing just a tiny fraction of the universe. The visible universe, everything we can detect from Earth with our current technology, makes up less than 5% of the total universe. The rest is made up of dark matter and dark energy, two mysterious substances that we know very little about. Dark matter is a type of matter that we can't directly observe, but can infer its existence based on its gravitational effects on visible matter. It's believed to make up about 27% of the universe. On the other hand, dark energy, making up a whopping 68% of the universe, is even more elusive. It's a form of energy that scientists believe is causing the universe's expansion to accelerate. Its exact nature is one of the greatest mysteries in modern physics. As you can see, our universe is a dark place, not in the sense of absence of light, but in the sense of unknown. But this darkness isn't something to be afraid of. Instead, it's a vast untapped field of scientific inquiry. It's a cosmic puzzle waiting to be solved, an invitation to explore, discover and understand. The human body wasn't designed for life in space. The lack of gravity can cause muscle and bone loss, while cosmic radiation poses a significant risk to health. Despite these challenges, a number of astronauts have spent extended periods of time in space, pushing the boundaries of human endurance and providing invaluable data for future long-duration missions. The current record holder for the longest continuous time in space is Russian cosmonaut Valery Polyakov, who spent 437 days aboard the Mir space station from January 1994 to March 1995. His mission was to study the effects of long-term spaceflight on the human body, a key piece of research for any future mission to Mars, which could take up to nine months one way. Polyakov's record might not hold for much longer, though. With ambitious plans for manned missions to Mars, the Moon and beyond, the next generation of astronauts may well become true spacefarers, spending years or even the rest of their lives away from Earth. It's a daunting prospect, but one that speaks to the relentless human drive to explore and conquer new frontiers. And as always, thanks for watching. From the dark matter that makes up most of our universe to the gem-like core of a dying star, We've journeyed through the cosmos and discovered just how wondrous, strange, and awe-inspiring it can be. Remember, as vast and infinite as space may be, there's always more to learn, more to discover, and more to inspire us. So keep looking up, stay curious, and continue exploring. Hey there, curious minds! Imagine for a moment the unthinkable. Earth is no longer safe for human habitation. Maybe it's an impending asteroid impact, a runaway greenhouse effect, or even the sun's expansion. Whatever the reason, we have to leave. But how would that massive evacuation play out? Let's dive into this thought experiment. The moment we realize Earth is in peril, the global atmosphere would undergo an unprecedented transformation. Streets would be awash with a mix of dread, confusion and determination. News networks would operate around the clock, updating every new development and people would cling to every word. The notion of business as usual would be thrown out the window as everyone's focus turns towards survival and what comes next. Within this upheaval, the wealthiest members of our society would play a pivotal role. For years, they've been investing in and championing private space ventures, dreaming of otherworldly explorations, commercial space flights, and even extraterrestrial colonization. These projects, which many once viewed as ambitious fantasies, could suddenly become the most practical and valuable assets humanity possesses. Take Elon Musk, for instance. His company SpaceX had visions of colonizing Mars. With self-sustaining habitats and advanced propulsion systems, their spacefaring technology might offer a glimmer of hope, even if initially intended for other purposes. Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, with its focus on building a road to space, would also be in the spotlight. 
The vessels designed for suborbital tourist flights might be repurposed, retrofitted, or used as foundational ideas for creating something bigger, something capable of saving a broader cross-section of humanity. These billionaires, due to their resources and foresight, would be uniquely positioned. Their enterprises could mobilize faster than bureaucratic governments, adapting their missions from exploration to evacuation. But with this power come significant ethical questions. Who decides the mission's priorities? Profit-driven companies are, by design, beholden to shareholders and bottom lines. In the face of Earth's potential demise, would these motivations shift? And if so, how? This new space race would also drive innovation at an unprecedented speed. The urgency to design, build and launch life-saving vessels would ignite a technological renaissance. Companies would collaborate, sharing knowledge and expertise, pushing boundaries in propulsion, life support systems and sustainable habitats. In a race against time, every second counts and the collaborative spirit of humanity might shine its brightest. Led by those with the means to make a difference, the announcement of an imminent threat to Earth, forcing a mass evacuation, would undoubtedly trigger a multifaceted response from governments worldwide. This mammoth task would test the mettle of leaders and institutions, revealing both the strengths and frailties of human governance. Historically, crises of global magnitude have sometimes led to unprecedented cooperation between nations. While political differences, territorial disputes and economic competitions have often fragmented our world, the sheer scale of this evacuation might push nations towards collaboration. Emergency summits could be convened, pooling together the brightest minds, resources and technologies. One of the foremost challenges would be the allocation of resources. Which country contributes what? Space programs such as NASA, ESA, Roscosmos, CNSA and ISRO would possibly need to coordinate their efforts. This could involve sharing research, technological innovations and manpower to accelerate the development and construction of evacuation vessels. Arguably, the most contentious aspect would be deciding who gets to board these ships. Would it be a meritocratic selection based on skills and expertise needed for the new world? Or would a more egalitarian approach be adopted, perhaps a lottery system ensuring a fair chance for all? Balancing these choices would be a moral, social and logistical tightrope. Maintaining public order would be vital. Governments would need to establish clear, transparent communication channels, updating citizens about progress, plans and any changes. Fostering a sense of unity and purpose, while managing panic and fear, would be a daily endeavour. While the primary goal would be survival, Governments would also be cognizant of the need to preserve the rich tapestry of human culture and knowledge. This could involve creating digital archives of art, literature, history and science. Every nation might contribute, ensuring a holistic representation of human civilization as we know it. Traditional economic models and currencies could face obsolescence in light of the impending exodus. New systems might be drafted, prioritizing resource, sharing, barter, or even a unified global currency designed for the unique requirements of life aboard the ships and beyond. With the global stakes so high, ensuring law and order would be paramount. International security forces could be formed to safeguard construction sites, technology hubs, and embarkation points. They'd also be responsible for mediating conflicts, both at national borders and within the confines of the evacuation ships. In the face of such an imminent and immense challenge, the design and construction of life-sustaining spaceships would have to prioritize efficiency, functionality and rapid deployment. Building a spacecraft is no easy feat under regular circumstances, but under these conditions conventional methodologies would need to be revisited and adapted. Central to the design would be sustainability the spacecraft would be home to its inhabitants for an indeterminate amount of time. As such, closed-loop life support systems would become crucial. This means systems that can regenerate resources, recycling air, water and even waste. Imagine large hydroponic sections, where plants are grown not just for sustenance, but also for the psychological benefits they bring in a confined, sterile environment. Spaceships would need to be modular in design. Modularity implies building sections or components separately, which can then be combined with ease like pieces of a puzzle. 
This would not only expedite construction, but also allow for adaptability. Depending on the mission or the number of passengers, these modules could be customized for specific needs, be it medical facilities, food production or recreational areas. Construction would likely shift to an orbital setting. Building in space eliminates many of the challenges posed by Earth's gravity. Massive structures, which would be impossible to launch from Earth due to their size and weight, could be constructed in space. Moreover, the use of materials sourced from space itself, like asteroids, might become a feasible and necessary approach. This would reduce the need to lift heavy payloads from Earth's surface, saving time and resources. Energy efficiency would be another cornerstone. Given the long durations these crafts might spend in space, they'd need robust and renewable energy sources. Solar panels, spread out like vast wings, might gather energy from the sun, while innovative nuclear propulsion systems could offer greater travel speeds and efficient energy usage. Another challenge would be shielding. Space is not friendly to human life. It's filled with radiation, micrometeors and extreme temperatures. Therefore, the outer layers of these crafts would need to be tough, providing protection while also incorporating materials or designs that can deflect or absorb harmful radiation. In the grand arena of space, every square inch of the ship would need a purpose. No longer dominated by aesthetics, design would bend towards practicality and survival. But within this, there would be an acknowledgement of human needs. Spaces to socialize, to find solitude, to maintain mental well-being. The understanding that the journey might be long and that the human spirit requires more than just physical sustenance would influence designs that cater to the whole human experience. As the shimmering blue orb of Earth recedes into the cosmic background and the vastness of space becomes the daily view, life aboard these evacuation spacecraft would represent one of the most profound shifts in human existence. A life untethered from our ancestral home with the cold vacuum of space just beyond the walls is a reality that would demand adaptability, resilience and innovation. Aboard the ship, the passage of days might become less defined by the rise and set of the sun and more by artificial markers. The concept of a 24-hour day might no longer be relevant, leading to the establishment of new routines and schedules. Ensuring a structured environment could be key to psychological well-being. Activities, work rotations and leisure times would be meticulously planned, bringing a semblance of order to the potentially chaotic situation. With a diverse population aboard, the ship would become a melting pot of cultures, ideas and beliefs. This could lead to new cultural evolutions or potential tensions. However, the mutual understanding of shared fate and purpose might foster unity and cooperation. Spaces dedicated to social interactions would be essential, from community halls for larger gatherings to smaller niches for more intimate conversations. The absence of natural gravity could have profound effects on the human body. Muscles and bones weaken in such environments. Hence, daily exercise routines using specially designed equipment might become mandatory for all inhabitants. Without the fertile lands of Earth, traditional farming becomes a memory. In its stead, hydroponics and aeroponic systems might dominate, with sections of the ship dedicated to growing essential crops. Algal farms could serve as both a source of oxygen and nutrition. The diet would likely be supplemented with lab-grown meats and vitamins to ensure a balanced nutrient intake for all. The isolation of space, combined with the knowledge of Earth's predicament, could weigh heavily on the minds of those aboard. Mental health would be a paramount concern. Spaces designed for relaxation, meditation or even spiritual practices might become essential. Therapists and counselors would play a crucial role helping individuals cope with the unique stresses of their new existence. Education wouldn't cease. Digital archives carrying the knowledge of Earth might be accessed in onboard learning centers. These hubs would not only educate the younger generation, but also allow adults to acquire new skills, catering to the evolving needs of the ship. All work and no play would make for a very dull journey. Recreational areas for games, arts, music, and other forms of entertainment would provide crucial respite from the daily routines. These activities wouldn't just serve as distractions, but also as outlets for expression and creativity. With no destination like a nearby hospitable planet, these ships would become generational vessels, 
Stories of Earth that was might become the stuff of legends, narrated to wide-eyed children who've never set foot on solid ground. Over time, cultures aboard each ship would evolve, leading to a diverse array of human subcultures, each shaped by their unique shipboard experiences. And as always, thanks for watching.